so let's get started uh hey everyone this is uh khalid from india i am the president i triple grss regional coordinator for india and i welcome you all to another webinar of i triple grss yp webinar series today's session is on the topic decoding urban growth and road networks uh geo spatial insights uh, of bangalore and we have the ieee grss region 10 chapter coordinator with us she is pursuing phd in spatial data science from the spatial computing laboratory international institute of information technology bangalore she has received mtech in geoinformatics from vtu and bachelor of technology in civil engineering from government college of engineering kannur she has also received ugit young technologist award in 2015 university honor in the 2014 2016 batch best paper awards and authored several journal papers book chapters and international conference papers now let's welcome the intriguing personality of today ms rahisha thototil over to you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for an uh, introduction and um, uh, welcome all for my uh, today's talk so here uh, i would like to discuss regarding uh, urban growth problems and how the geospatial technologies can be used for urbanization uh, issues or uh, challenges before in jump into the real problem or the topic i would uh, i would I, i would like to talk a little bit about my lab where i am working and what are the research work we are doing under uh, our lab so i am part of spatial computing laboratory it's a it's a uh, it's a sub domain of a center of data science team and uh, at triple it bangalore and uh, uttam professor uttam kumar is leading our entire team we have a uh, different uh, research works are doing uh, within our domain like uh, we used to do spatial data mining al computer algorithmic and uh, different applications of geospatial technologies kind of environmental studies climate studies or even um, Uh, kind of uh, heat island problems or different different uh, agriculture related projects we are doing and we used to conduct a lot of webinars seminars or we we want to expand our uh, knowledge whatever uh, research we are doing we are uh, we, we are just giving seminars to all over the uh, world uh, and then uh, because we have a limited time period so i want to uh, talk a little bit uh, uh, a little more about our research now whatever research work i am doing uh, within our uh, team so introduction with we'll start with introduction and background so do more people live in urban or because when we see the statistic of uh, population statistics uh, before in 1971 we can see this yellow with the cyan color right so wherever the cyan color is there that was a rural majority what we have represented here and uh, wherever it's a reddish color that is a urban area in 1971 it it was a like a major part of the uh, is a rural area but when we come into real time like 2024 more the 50 percentage of the area comes in the uh, urban area and in when when you see the pre predicted or a projected value by U united nation 2050 this will be the scenario then Uh, here you can see uh, uh, urban is a very very complex system it's not only looking into a landscape analysis or it it have a lot of subsystem uh, few people will be working on urban ecosystem itself is a complete research topic or environmental related uh, work or climate related there are really different different sub domains are there all combined together we call it as a complex urban system and uh, right now the today more people live in city than the rural area we all know that about it what is the major factors like what are the two factors contributing to this uh, uh, urbanization it can be due to the natural increase in population or the migration due to the uh, due to the quality of life or so high advanced technologies providing in a urban system and uh, when we see the statistics uh, it's say, saying that 2030 77% of global urban population is expected to be in a developing countries like india china or even africa 
when uh, look into the indian context we have a lot of metropolitan cities like delhi mumbai kolkata and uh, right now i am looking at major problems in a bangalore cities you can see the bangalore is highlighted here population in 2020 this was the scenario within this within a year uh, it has increased and right now it is a 13 million now you can see the share like percentage of increasing urban population compared to the other cities urban uh, like bangalore city population is increasing by 3.56 but it's around 4% so that is a big number, right? Like we should think every year these many people are coming or moving towards Bangalore. So what will be the future of Bangalore? You can see a little bit more. In 1973, there was only 1 million. Then next it's a 13 million. Urbanization is happening. We know that word. there is a lot of positive uh, factor behind urbanization. Like we know the economic. Obviously, when we have a good uh, opportunity or employment opportunity, obviously the economic growth will increase from one uh, person to one uh, level to the other level. And we will get a lot of innovation hubs and opportunities will be there. A lot of people will be moving to the central part of the cities. Then cultural diversity will be there. Good health facility will be there. Education facility opportunities will be there and uh, there there are positive impacts on urbanization but we should think about what does what is the negative impacts of these kind of urbanization so when you see the housing affordability when we move a lot of people into center housing because there is no space that a city does not have a capacity to afford or to hold all the people within the city then there will be a lot of car traffic congestion problem air pollution this all are the negative that is a in once the urbanization is happening there will be pros and cons right pros we have listed here and cons also will be there I have highlighted few traffic congestion is the biggest problem in Bangalore city and infrastructure strain in case of a transportation, public transport or a road facility and land management challenge. These are the few uh, uh, selected topics or issues I have used for my research work. But more than that, a lot of other negative impacts are also there. motivate me to look into these kind of a problem and what is future like how we can use geospatial technologies or these satellite imageries for a sustainable urban planning so then uh, what is this especially for a larger metropolitan in case of uh, bangalore is a larger metropolitan so then uh, how to decentralize these kind of uh, cities and move into medium and small to how to develop nearby surrounding the small and medium level towns and cities. So and then uh, urban land use planning, it's a, we, if we have a well-informed policies based on sustainable development principle and well-planned and well-managed initiative can address many urban challenges, like real world problems can be resolved by, uh, by uh, if we have a well-informed policies or a, uh, any a sustainable plan. With that, I have framed my objectives with, the, with respect to these problems. So I have just listed only because of the time, like I just listed a few uh, studies, whatever we have done within our research group. First one is analyze the spatial temporal land expansion and landscape dynamics and how we can do the hotspot analysis. I'll explain one by one. Then first uh, research question itself is was that like understanding what is happening in the last 50 years, understanding historical land use changes. Then what are the main events caused these kind of changes that we call it as an event triggered urban extension. If some if, if such uh, events or some events happen within uh, surrounding region, what will be happening in that area? So that we call it as an event triggered expansion. Then we want to use modeling or technologies to understand what will be the future cities looks like. That we call it as a modeling geovisualization of urban roads. Then a road network is an important infrastructure in any kind of a cities. We want to understand what is the topological assessment of a road networks. That is the fourth problem statement I have taken. Then understanding all this, what need to be done and to predict the transportation indices or in we can call it as a uh, in network density can be considered as a indice. So then uh, we uh, we used all these technology to predict the transportation index. 
then uh, feature extraction, uh, I'll explain a few feature extraction technology what we have used in our research lab. Then result, uh, uh, first uh, problem was analyzing the spatial turbulent land expansion. So what are the research questions we can resolve by taking this as an objective? How did the urban area expanded for it? In case of a Bangalore city, since 1970s, how the expansion happened? Because satellite imageries will give us a clear picture how the expansion happened. Then are there any trends of growth towards certain direction? Is there any directional movement for the urban growth? In which direction the urban expansion is happening? And how to visualize it through the maps? then quantify it because we even through satellite imagery we we know that okay this area expansion is happening some kind of a landscape matrices will, will give us a quantified measure to understand how the expansion is happening so this is a study area i have taken Bangalore region because when we this is a Bangalore BBMP area when we see a center part of a city or already I overlooked the research like most of the research paper we're looking into the center part of the city but what is next we want to look into the surrounding region what is the peri-urban area or a rural part of the area is uh, how it is changing over a period so then uh, I'll just uh, methodology if it's if you, know, the, you, you can consider it as a three part. First, understanding the landscape analysis, then using a time span, how the within the time interval, how that expansion is happening. Then with a different scale level, is it a uh, like a grid level analysis? We call it as a first initially we consider it as a whole whole study region, how much expansion happened. Then, then only be uh, binary related. Uh, that is initially we considered as a multi-level classification problem. The second, it was a binary level classification. Third, it is a grid level analysis. I'll I'll show you some results. Then you will uh, appreciate the work. Then. Um, those who are in GRS's background, everyone know that how the classifications happen. We have used random forest classification algorithm to do a classification. Uh, so classification means uh, all the pixel we categorized into four classes. Then we reclassify it into a binary class that we call it as a only built up and non built up area because we are more into like concentrate on the how the built up area or the class has changed over a period. Then these are the indices we have used for quantifying these measures. You can see the grid level, like each grid or one to 132 grids are there. Each grid, how the uh, area has changed or is that what kind of expansion or what kind of uh, urban growth is happening in each grid. That was our first research objective. We can see the classific classified image results. So these wherever uh, I highlighted, this is an airport area when in 1990s it was completely green that entire study area was called as a garden city and all but now it's a completely red in color it's a concrete or a built up area so you can see in 2022 current scenario and our, uh, this area has changed this is Busur and electronic city. these are the major cities or major cent uh, sports uh, hot spots in a uh, uh, Bangalore city so these kind of studies will give us a clear picture of how like within 10 years or every decade how the changes happen like you can see the selected year statistics also every year statistics also possible from 1973 to 2023 50 years of data sets are there then we will get know the each year how the changes happen statistics are also shows that around um, the, from the 38000 hectare to 94 thousand hectares are Therefore, a built-up area has uh, area increased. You can see built-up area is gradually increasing and the vegetation part is gradually decreasing. So this is how the urbanization can be quantified. So when we see the water body, you can see selected portions here. Uh, there are a lot of water bodies are uh, like uh, it, it. Initially, it was a large water body was there and that was not pre present in the next consecutive years. Then it may be due to the misclassification as well, because when we see the satellite imagery, there is a lot of muddy area or a sandy area or a vegetation area. Maybe before below that, it's a water body. Maybe due to the misclassification or maybe due to some overlaying or a sandy pictures or a pixel will be re, uh, misclassified into water bodies as well. 
but uh, there is a good uh, like a positive uh, uh, like uh, in case of a water body i could see a little bit of, on what like positive change we call it initially it was a bad kind of a, uh, like a dried lake we can call then due to the government uh, initiatives and all the result uh, water body has come as it is condition and later it was uh, 19 it was this was the condition 23 this is the condition like that few other barren uh, lands or uh, dried lakes are regenerated into uh, water bodies so then we see the expansion map 1973 these red pixels are uh, built up area then uh, how it is expanding over a period that we call it as interval or a uh, time uh, series data analysis then uh, we we have taken a central part as a, uh, this area this boundary you can see here then uh, how how dense built up density was the, you can see each pixel because this is a grid wise analysis in which grid or 5 by 5 kilometer raised grid in which grid the density is more and how much is the density we can quantify it's based on that you can see after 9 2023 20, entire bbmp area is a completely built density like it's a dense area now the expansion is happening beyond the center part of the city now the peri urban area is getting urbanized Hosur area is getting urbanized and this is getting urbanized and when we see the hot spot like uh, major changes over a rate of change over a period then you can see north part of a bangalore or this wherever the airport regions are there surrounding pixels are getting converted into a complete uh, built up area uh, complete like after evolution of build 1973 to 2023 you can see then center part here and this is the new bbmp boundary or the new boundary as uh, 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 like planned by, by government and, and there is a recent report from a, a, a newspaper then it's called a north bangalore turns into a new hotspot that means for us the whatever result we are we got in the last year the february uh, we uh, i have completed my research analysis but in september few papers are already reported that this is happening because north part of bangalore city is developing and because of a lot of new uh, industrial areas are coming coming up in this area so my research is almost matching with the, uh, uh, all other researchers and uh, newspapers as well. And transportation related thing. When we see the transportation, we can see the corridor, right? Where this is called uh, airport area and this is a Hosu region. This is the Bangalore Hosu highways and how the transportation area or road network is affecting these kind of expansion. That was the next interesting topic for us. So we identified that, okay, as expansion is happening, in which grid it is happening, in which frequent, uh, like in which period it happened or what is the reason for that? Then, uh, so th to quantify this, we have used some kind of indices I have mentioned, right? Indices means uh, some few indices will give you a similar result, like number of patches or a class area will give you the same information. So we don't need to include same information. So multicollinearity problem will be there when we do a mod modeling part. So instead of that, we, we have we understand the, what are the indices are correlated or related. So only uh, like... Uh, same information we are uh, excluding from our uh, report or a modeling part. So this is how one in the, for example, in case of uh, like in this uh, number of patches or in case of a class area, so you can see exactly in which grid based on these plots, we can say exactly in P1, P2, in which boxes uh, expansions happen and which year it has happened and how much it is uh, we can quantify by using these kind of uh, statistical measures. Here also it's a D1, D1 you can see here, this is a D1 pixel, sorry, grid, we can call it as a one grid. Initially it was only few patches of set settlements were there, but when we see in 2019, it is a 2010 image and this is 2019 image, there is a lot of patches at there. Based on that, the value has dropped, AI aggregation value has dropped. So this was the first research objectives that we have uh, considered. 
the second was understanding the events look like how because uh, uh, uh first of all we should understand what are the major contribution for these events so so understanding what are the events happened in which year it's happened and we identified that so for example with this okay and this is one event so you can see a lot of red spots here this we consider as a different event so here for example one is a camp international airport construction that is considered as a one event because of this event how the name neighborhood pixel or a grid has changed okay 1985 this was the google earth image when time goes this is the condition and when you see the another event is a minakshi mall in bangalore so 2000 uh, 2009 this was the scenario but when the times are 2021 it's a completely uh, built up area so you can see here when we have a classified image of these kind of uh, area you can see this is an event in which grid like 67 68 79 in which grid the expansion happened over a pyramid last five years how the expansion happened and next five years how it is going to happen based on the historical trend that is also possible to do that and um, this is kind of a grid analysis each grid uh, what was the like a uh, class value initially it was only 187 hectare then in 20 2013 after five years of that inauguration of that airport, how the class area or uh, area, class area means built up area has changed time frame. So like that, another matrices. So these kind of researches or these kind of technology will help us to understand how these events are uh, like uh, that is involving for urban expansion. The third experiment was understanding and modeling it for a future. So we know that Earth observation that our satellite imageries are very good input for any kind of these uh, expansion studies. Then we are using these as an input for a historical satellite imageries or a classified imageries or as a as an input for building a model then uh, uh, then predicting how, how how the trend analysis doing a trend analysis how the future cities will look like so that will help then these are the existing uh, urban growth model then we have used uh, these are the like uh, we, we call it as a driving factors what are the drivers or the uh, influencing factor for the urban growth I'll show the result part because this is already published to work. Uh, then you can see through patch land use simulation model, you can see 2022, this was the actual scenario by using a linear regression or a, uh, by using a patch land use simulation model, we could relate it around 83% accuracy was there related to our work. In 2022, the actual was 22% of uh, built up area in this area. Then the predicted one was simulator one, 20.31. And when we have a, another model that is called, because in this case, we need a lot of driving factors. But in Indian, India case, we don't have a like a time series of driving factors. We are limited with the data. So then in that case, uh, if we have only LULC maps, then that is also you can be useful for build a uh, model. Okay, then this is we called as a STM model. For the STM model, uh, without driving factors, the initial plus model was with the driving factor, then STM was without driving factor. That is also giving a good accuracy of 97%. Uh, then we can see that before it was 22.55 percentage of uh, classified image, uh, the value, then 23.85 was the uh, predicted value of STM. Then uh, there is a, a different models will have a different uh, like uh, uh, limitations are also there. But uh, within the uh, data limitations or uh, with the, within the computation power, we could do a lot of good research in urban growth models. Then the fourth problem was that understanding the transportation parameter because in Bangalore city, we uh, we have a lot of uh, traffic congestion problems. Understanding understanding the pattern, spatial pattern of a road is very, very important for these kind of a studies. Then you can see a graph theory. Graph theory uh, can be related to a road. Here you can see each road, we can categorize it into one kind of a graph. Each intersection point, dead end points, consider as a uh, nodes, we call it as a nodes. Then the connection of two nodes, we call it as a link or a 
edges. So with that, we can quantify some information. So that I'll show you. We have a, uh, some in a, like a measures. We call it as a connectivity measures and coverage measures. Consider this as a simple example of a road network. Here, number of edges is nothing, but wherever cuts are there, this we can call it as a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges are there. We call it E is equal to seven. Vertices is wherever intersection points are there that we call it as a vertices vertices are also seven here then p is a planar graph it's a single planar graph that we call as a one then uh here here you can see p is equal to two because here there is a two graphs are there here it is a p is equal to one or it's a only one graph it's a all connected graph then uh, with all this parameter, we can quantify these measures. We call it as a connectivity indices and coverage indices. Uh, instead of looking into these equations, and I would I would like to show some interesting result over this uh, ward level analysis of Bangalore City. Uh, we have a 192, 198 wards in B BBMP area. Uh, Kemba Gowda ward is the first one. We we have a, a zonal area or a zone area, that uh, ward area we can call it. It's a ward area. Then number of vertices for that individual ward and number of edges for that individual ward. These two values and these uh, will give us a total length also can be easily quantified by using GIS tool. These vertices will help us to quantify these kind of a measures. We call it as a connectivity measures. We can see the connectivity measures are ranging from, so here this is alpha. It's Ranges from 0 to 1. Wherever more than 0.8 means connectivity is higher in that cases. I can see this result. This is a BBMP wards. So each ward, each zone we can call, each zone, wherever dark colors are, the connectivity is much higher. Central part of the city have a very good connectivity compared to these areas. So these all will, uh, this alpha, gamma and beta is giving a similar result because they three all representing the, uh, even GTP also giving the similar result because this all represent the uh, connectivity of uh, each word. But this is something that's called edge uh, or a eta index that is based on the edge length. So the research shows that out of 198, we have only 160, uh, like 34 uh, wards have a good connectivity that means more than 75 percent of wards does not have a very good connectivity that is the result uh we, we could see that apart from connectivity we did a lot of coverage indices measures also that means the network density measures that is a coverage like uh, within the area what is the uh, total area of uh, road length divided by the ward area so that is one of the results we are getting. And when we can model it also, if we have a connectivity measures, how to quantify the coverage measures that we, we have a, some relationship over there, then we can quantify that also as well. Then uh, there are a lot of GIS tools available, open source GIS tools available uh, to do all these analysis. And the second uh, work with the related to transportation, what we have done, how to do a walkability indices for a smaller area because it's a larger area. Now we are doing a pilot study of HSR layout. Uh, we consider it is a smaller area, 30 square kilometer area. Then uh, connectivity measures I'll show you. We have uh, some tools called coins tool to address because whenever we have a OISM data set, we don't have a hierarchical map there. So instead, we it, the name is not uh, like a, it's a primary road or a secondary road or even uh, we could not... Uh, classify it based on the length or uh, based on the uh, name. It may not be properly named. So we have uh, some kinds of uh, coins tools in a QGIS software to understand how, what is the hierarchy of a road network. Then when we do such analysis, we can match it with a real-time Google imagery or OSM data itself. We can uh, relate our results here. It is also published work. And when we have a grid analysis, we can exactly do the network density of each grid, how it is changed over a period. Sorry, it's not over a period. It's a for a status, one only for a one-year data set. Because in OSM data, we don't have a temporal time series of our road network. So then walkability indices also can be measured in each grid. What is the walkability indices based on the built-up footprint?
that is also possible then uh, this is for only for a bangalore city then we want to do it for a larger national level like uh, we have published one paper regarding the entire nation we have selected few selected cities we call it as a small and medium towns then uh, we uh, we selected those cities understanding the road pattern of those cities and classify it as what is the good connected road or a, which are the cities having a very good connectivity out of this 503 cities so this is the larger or a national level project to understand which are the area does not have a good connectivity and which are the the government should focus or they should give some attention towards which are the cities the government should give attention so these are the few studies we have expanded from the previous studies then very important contribution from our research work was that by understanding the urban pattern like uh, out of that 503 small and medium town cities we have a settlement pattern of a binary imagery like these imageries we have this is a uh, like a already uh, like a, the previous literature shows that if we have a generative model if we have a huge settlement data set we can generate few kinds of terrace like a similar pattern of urban area can be simulated so we can call it as a gen we can generate it so we call it as a this is already built by Al, uh, albert from mit 2018 uh, it's called a, a unconstrained uh, gans those that is called uh, unsupervised classification not classification it's a generative models then uh, another one was uh, ex extension of his paper was talking up here the main purpose is there there is no labeling but they are not in, in putting any real-time data set but here they are giving a lot of future feature data set to understand the relationship between the feature and the real-time settlement pattern then they are doing uh predicting or uh, simulating some similar city why we are doing this this is another city because understanding the research gap out of these existing papers were very important so we have used this system generative adversarial network and um, these kind of applications in urban sense in india it's very limited so then we want to do the because we don't have a such a huge data sets as well so what are the questions we want to resolve? How to generate such or a futuristic or a realistic or a realistic cities by using generative model? Then how to how to relate this into transportation? Because we did a lot of studies in settlement pattern. We did a lot of studies in transportation. How these works can be related? And how is that settlement pattern have any relation with the transportation? That was the important research question we want to resolve it. If there is a relationship, if we have a, a settlement pattern, is it possible to predict a transportation indices for such a settlement pattern? That was another research question we want to resolve it. For that, we have used a generative model for simulating some similar cities like such cities are not there for the reality but we want to simulate it realistic or a realistic looking uh, cities for a predicted transportation indices for such a new cities so that was our major uh, work so uh, i'll explain within uh, uh I, okay i hope i have a time right like khalid yeah uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the work. So from the entire nation, we have selected 503 uh, small and medium level uh, towns or uh, cities. Then uh, these are the cities selected by use. You can see the pattern here. This is uh, 503 uh, with the grid level patterns or a, this is called as a human settlement imageries. Then the, for the respective road network is also extracted because this is a image one and for the respective road network of that. Similar 503 cities are there. With that, we could generate similar pattern cities this is how the road this uh, generative model or the entire work will be there and uh, if we have a uh, simulated patterns here so this is the real real type uh, data set from uh, german dlr then we will feed these generative or or this uh, real human settlement imagery to the uh, ct gan model then this will give us a simulated imageries then uh, we can we can use a fragstep software to quantify the actual matrices of landscape matrices of these indices or uh, for from the simulated 
or from the uh, human uh, like real time cities as well so this will give us a uh, some statistic measures and this also will give us a statistic and these and from the road net because represent a respective road network we have from the road network we can quantify network density very easily so this network density and as uh, landscape matrices will give us a relationship between these indices with respective cities actually city number one will have a indices of this landscape and city number one will have a road networks once I identify the relationship between that we can build a model by using this, uh, machine learning methods this is the overall work so this is unsupervised city can architecture we have a generative and adversarial uh, discriminator, but we can real image. So uh, I hope uh, this is very clear, right? Like what is the major uh, part here? We are collecting a satellite image, like a settlement pattern from the different parts of the city, small and medium towns that will be feed into the, our generative model to generate simulated uh, settlement. And from these real and from the simulated, we are quantifying these landscape matrices. So what is next? If we have a landscape matrices, is it possible to predict the transportation indices? For that, we have used a nonlinear kernel ridge regression. Uh, so that will help us to predict uh, transportation indices out of it. I'll show you some results. So here you can, so these are the simulated sample cities over here. So here we can, uh, this is uh, this is a part of integrated development, small and medium town project. Because part in the sense we are, we want to support these kind of uh, uh, projects into this uh, government scheme. And here you can see these are the real cities. You can see the Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. There are different cities over here. And uh, there are simulated cities here. This is a generated cities from GAN model. And we have uh, applied some summary or uh, statistic measures to quantify is that uh, simulated images look real as original one that we have used to uh, average radial profile map uh, for, from each uh, simulated and the, we, we compared it with a real type. So this is how the result shows and we have, uh, we can see here it's a real, it's a blue color and uh, the simulated is a yellow color. We can see a lot of different, uh, like uh, around 10 classes we could classify out of uh, generated imageries. Different uh, regression models we tried to uh, to predict the transportation index uh, out of uh, different uh, indices or uh, out of different uh, models. We could see that kernel ridge regression is giving a better result than any other. So there are little bit limitations over this one. Uh, that means we can't uh, because these kind of uh, real cities are not there, right? So we cannot quantify you cannot compare it with the real cities uh, with the simulated cities because it's a simulated one does not cannot be matched with the real type there are one or two uh, and uh, here we didn't use any other uh, uh, feature uh, methods or a feature uh, features are not included to build our model only settlement pattern has been used but if you do a lot of digital elevation model or different other feature set into our model, it will be benefited. Then another problem is feature extraction. Feature extraction is, suppose we have a satellite imagery, if we have, is it possible to extract a building footprint out of it? The major problem with the uh, Landsat series of data, it's a 30 meter resolution data. We cannot extract built up or footprints from the satellite imagery of a Landsat series. So for that, we have used a Google imageries. This is a Google Earth imagery. So we, we don't, we, we don't have a, uh, like a uh, spectral information about the Google Earth image, only the uh, spatial information is possible by using uh, Google Earth images. So from this, we build the RF model. Uh, these are the manually digitized building footprints, and this has been used to build. Up. This is the result part. This is a classified image, and when we do a little bit morphological operations over there, we can do a lot of uh, like when we compare with the ground truth. That is a lot of like eighty five point six two percentage of the similarity with the uh, after morphological operation. Uh, before without feature set, we are getting only eighty one point two percent. 
So that is a like a building footprint extraction by using Google Earth imagery using random forest. We have used a different similarity indices measures uh, like uh, from image one to after morphological operation. We can see that little bit improvement over uh, morphological operations over here. The another case study was uh, by using, uh, because this is a satellite image of a high resolution with a world view too. That is the uh, spectral information is included and spe uh, spatial information is uh, are also included. Then when we uh, include both the uh, both the measures or the both the resolutions or informations together, when we have a simple CNN model or a unit model, we'll give you a better result than any other RF model. I can see the result part here. There is 91, RF is getting 88. But when we do a simple CNN model, we'll give you 93.52 percent accuracy. This is the grayscale of uh, world view two, And this is the uh, predicted or a uh, classified value of this. Case three was a cloud because Google Earth Engine is a lot of applications are or a lot of uh, tools are available through Google Earth Engine. And here satellite imageries are free. We don't need to download. That is a very uh, nice platform available for doing a lot of analysis over there. Then Google Earth Engine uh, is used to do a classification first. Then after classification, we identify 20, 20. This is a just two very short interval, 2018 and 2020. Then you can see here in 20, even the two years difference, there is a like a huge difference in urban settlements. So 19.2% increase, increase uh, in urban area for one uh, particular uh, ward. So when we see the Google Earth imagery for 2018 and 2020, we could see because we call it as a comparison with the two periods with the ground truth or a, we, we are understanding what is happening in the particular area or a particular uh, ward. Uh, then there, is a, there was a field before in 2018 and after two years, there was a lot of uh, built up area. Through Google Earth Engine, Google Imageries, we confirmed our results are giving up um, good results. And then um, out of this, uh, that uh, that studies are giving out of 198 watts, 173 watts have witnessed increasing urbanization with a short period of time. Another important case study by using satellite imagery or uh, these kind of spatial technology, understanding the wherever uh, this kind of like uh, we call it as a uh, like a, a human settlement without electricity. Understanding wherever electricities are not uh, present in the world. So we have considered as a Bangalore and surrounding region. And we have used a lot of indices to do the classification. Then you can see here, this is our uh, collaborative work with the um, uh, government. And here you can see here in Kambagoda is the and uh, international exhibition. This is major sports. It, this is where our institutions place. And the results shows that this is classified image through a Google Earth Engine and a symbol classification of RF. And this is a nighttime light data. When we do a comparison over this, we can see that these are the area, around 6% of the area does not have a proper electricity. So this is the major information or good information we can give to the uh, government uh, that uh, what are the initiative or what are the uh, development program we can uh, implement over these area. So this is uh, some results from the part. So with that, I'll conclude uh, my talk. And uh, this is the team what we were doing, uh, like we are working together. And uh, Uttam Kumar sir is leading our entire team. And uh, Tanuji sir is also uh, helping uh, all students. And uh, future research work, uh, we can uh, initially we try to understand the indices uh, relation with the transportation and settlement. Now we want to look into the larger uh, perspective that uh, kind of uh, multi level because settle not even the binary classification. We want to look into the four classes of all the 503 selected cities. Then climate related studies we want to because where we know that where the urbanization happening, uh, heat uh, island problem will be there or a lot of uh, hot area that there. then we can we can do a lot of uh, integration within the subsystems of a complex urban system so that is our major uh, research in the future
with that i'll conclude the session so we can uh, because uh, each topic i didn't like i just uh, went through very fast if you have any specific queries regarding particular topic uh, we can discuss further because my major uh, goal was that like, i want to show the what are the major work we are doing within our team or within our research uh, lab so with that i'll conclude the session thank you uh thank you raisha that was a really yeah. insightful and in depth session i must say that <laughs> okay. so uh we will be having a few questions uh and i see uh two of them in the in the q and a box already and then a few in the chat so just before we head towards the q and a session i have uh two announcements to make uh so i hope you all are aware of the igars conference happening in greece this year and with respect to that i have uh to announce announcements let me share my screen yes so uh it's the 3 mt 3 minute thesis uh where people who are participating um can join uh by you know submitting a video uh where you upload a 3 minute uh video detailing your research and thesis topic uh to a platform like uh, youtube or tiktok and uh, submit your link with us to enter the competition the deadline is uh, may 15th and the another announcement i have is of geo pitch 2024 let me share that with you yes so it's an exciting competition that will take place in an elevator pitch format with participants having only 1 minute uh, to capture the attention of judges with their innovative ideas um and all students and young professionals attending igars 2024 are eligible to participate so for these two competitions we have exciting cash prizes and certificates for winners and please do apply and don't miss so that's all from my side i think we can get back to the q and a so let us start with the q and a box so the comment is oh, uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a very long one but yeah uh, interesting presentation it was mentioned that there might be an issue of misclassification resulting to either under or overestimation of built up and other land cover classes in this aspect how reliable are the build up area statistics including the calculated changes in build up areas as well as other quantities derived from the land cover maps and with these errors it is likely that the changes in build up area cannot be totally attributed due to the actual change some of the detected changes can be due to the errors of classification are these errors significant enough such that when they are accounted the analysis it could make the results and conclusions significantly different yeah can i answer that yeah raisha i hope you got that yeah. it's a very thank long question <laughs> very expanded question sir thank you for your uh, patience to, uh, to write these qu queries so yes you said uh, correctly there will be misclassification error in water bodies because when we see a satellite imagery we could see a uh, like a muddy land or a vegetation cover but in real time that will be uh, water body so but in our case that is a level 1 uh, due to the level 1 classification error the initially level 1 classification has done and uh, each classes what are the error we quantified it so that is why we are looking into the second level we are looking in only built up area but when we see a built up area classification accuracy it is more than 95 96 percentage accuracy we are getting it but in case of a water body it is not the case that is why i highlighted that in case of a water body there is a chance of misclassification but in case of a built up area we we uh, like uh, 
clearly uh, taken a different sample from the entire study region and we understood that uh, more than 90 percentage of accuracy should be there for uh, our next uh, level analysis because the initial level it was a multi-level but in the second level it was only built up then with the built up we expanded into grid level analysis that is why we don't need to carry over our error to the next uh, level analysis so because even though through satellite imagery as a uh, expert or a ex remote sensing person uh, i could see that by, by human eye it is look like a vegetation part or a uh, sandy area or a uh, barren land but in google earth engine uh, google imageries or a, in uh, maybe in uh, due to the seasonal uh, Time, maybe uh, maybe a, a dry season or something that is a that may be the uh, error factor but we we try to avoid it for a built-up area for that area. i think i have answered for that uh, first question is there any uh con is there uh, any looks good to me answer? yeah so uh there's another question uh so we'll just move to that i hope uh this answers your query because we don't have a name here so the next question is, uh, thanks for the presentation. Although it was a bit rushed and there was so much information presented, it was interesting. Nonetheless, with all these results, I would like to know if these have been presented or being considered to be presented to local authorities, decision makers, or to concerned agencies in India for their utilization. Example as basis for the planning decision making within the context of sustainable urbanization. Uh, actually, yes. Thank you so much for uh, your uh, queries or even uh, uh, bits. So then uh, we have presented few uh, government organization like Karnataka State Remote Sensing Application Centers and all. Uh, but um, that was just an initial level. Recently, I completed my research. Uh, I didn't uh, go through that next level. Like uh, I need to submit my thesis. I need to present these work into the now, like in the paper and I need to contact because once it is completed then only I can contact government or um, real uh, authorities uh, what is need to be taken care for these areas so that is our next level it is there in our planning so that's what we are doing right now thank you Raisha so we have two more questions and then I think we can conclude the next question is uh, you have mentioned a few models such as PNN, GAN, UNIT. Can you explain which software you use to apply these models? And which model you have found more yeah. effective in your study? Yeah, software for uh, any deep learning or machine learning, one, there is no particular software available. I have used Python programming for doing all this. Uh, because as a GIS uh, tools, now we, if we have a programming skills, then only we can build a, like uh, the models which what we require. Simple classification models are available with the GIS software, but uh, UNET, uh, I have used uh, programming with uh, Python or even um, RF also I tried with uh, programming with the Python or even with the QGIS also. So there is uh, there is no particular software for uh, doing a machine learning models. Uh, thank you, Raisha. I hope this answers the query. Uh, the last question we have for today is uh, reasons for Bangalore storm water problems. Yeah, that is completely because of the like uh, unplanned development, we call it. Uh, <laughs> because um, the government, I could not say that they, they don't know where they excite. The problem is that the research should happen before uh, migrations happening because randomly people are coming and settling somewhere and um, the planning was not properly, we should say. Uh, maybe because of that, uh, uh, that was the major, uh, from my um, my point of view. So he just added, uh, yeah, the questioner is just added to it, like what is a suitable solution that you could think of, if you have anything in mind. Decentralize these metropolis, Decent. you don't need to, add, like instead of putting a lot of fund into the center part of the city or a Bangalore city, look into the small and medium towns nearby Mysore, Hubli or wherever it is. 
like initiative or the put a fund into the like infrastructure development of that surrounding regions and um, spread the population or the instead of the simple answer is decentralize the metropolis that is a simple answer i hope uh, people in the leadership you know they take forward to these solutions and think about that uh, thank you raisha for answering those questions mm -hmm. and the people Thanks. who raise their queries uh, you can still reach out to raisha on her linkedin uh, and you know ask her anything you want to know more about or maybe if you want to plan some something with research she's always there on linkedin you can reach out to her there and uh, yes. uh, thank you everyone for joining today uh and thank you rahisha for taking your time and taking out time and then you know being here today with us and then presenting you all your work that you have done with the research thank you thank you so much